Good evening. This we have read about three sacrifices, three korbanot, three offerings that people bring to Hashem. And each of them have very different uh, results in terms of Hashem's acceptance or rejection of them. If you take a look at last week's parish of Bereshit, we have the famous story of Cain and Abel. I'd just like to read to you from Perik Dalad, Pasuk, Gimel and Dalad. Um, that is chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Vayhi mi and it was after an, uh, the, the end of a number of days. Kain mi prihadama mincha ladunai. And Cain brought from the produce of the ground a gift to Hashem. The Hevel, Hevi Gamhu, Mi Bukharotsono, Michal Behen. And Hevel, Abel, brought also himself from the first of his flock and the fattest ones, in other words, the best. Vayisha Dana Hevel, the Almin Chator. And God turned to accept Abel and his sacrifice. Velkain Velmin Chator, Lo Sha'a. And to Cain and his offering he did not accept. So we see the first difference is that Cain's offering is rejected, ignored. Abel's offering is accepted. What's the difference? So our sages point out that Cain brings an offering from the produce of the ground. Abel brings the best of his flocks. Cain clearly did not bring the best. Abel brought the best. We know when you're giving a gift to Hashem, you must give the best. You must give the best that you have. That was something that Abel knew. And that Cain didn't live up to. And Hashem says the message to Cain afterwards. You can still improve, but what you've done simply wasn't good enough. It's important not to lower your standards. Even when dealing with a child or a student, you need to show love, you need to show understanding, you need to show willingness to work with them to improve. But that doesn't mean that everything's okay. Hashem says, table, this wasn't okay. What you did wasn't okay. You can improve, and it can be better, but you, you will need to do better if you want to achieve because this wasn't right. And uh, the, the, uh, the question here is, why does Cain bring a substandard offering? After all, nobody forced him. Nobody commanded him. Nobody obligated him to bring anything. In fact, he is the first person we see explicitly in the Torah bringing anything to Hashem. Uh, he's the one who, who came up with the idea of sacrifice. And he's the one who comes up with the idea of giving a gift to Hashem and he gives a substandard gift. This is very strange. Somebody comes to give you a birthday present completely out of the blue. And they bring you a nice birthday present. Why would they do that? Don't bring the present and don't worry about it. So Rabbi Moshe Feinstein has a very interesting explanation. He says, we know that the offerings that we give Hashem are not for Hashem. Hashem needs nothing. Hashem says through the words of his prophets, do you think that I eat the, uh, the, do you think that I, that I eat the, the flesh of rams and drink the blood of goats? You know, do you think that somehow this is something that Hashem is deriving pleasure or benefit from the actual sacrifice? That's not how it works. What's happening is that we are giving of ourselves to Hashem. And Cain understood that. And therefore he said, I don't want to give a big lavish sacrifice because then it looks like I'm giving for, for, for Hashem. I'm giving for the ultimate benefit of Hashem. It's not true. It makes no difference to Hashem. Whether I give a lot or a little, the difference it makes is to me. And therefore he says, so I'll give a little bit. Doesn't make a difference to Hashem. He's right. It doesn't make a difference to Hashem. But it does make a difference to you. When you bring just something small, you're not really bringing all that much. The Kotzka Rebbe points out, as we said, the Hevel Hevi Gamhu, and Abel brought also himself. Cain brought an offering, but Abel also brought himself. Abel brought his heart and soul into the mix. That was the difference. That was why Abel's offering was accepted. But you'll ask me, what does all this have to do with Parsha Noach, without Parsha? Well, that's where the next sacrifice comes in, the next offering, and that is of Noach of Noah. This is in chapter 8, verse 20. Chaf Aleph. Uh, sorry, Chet Chaf. Ve'ven Noach mizbeach l'adonai, and Noah built an altar to Hashem. V'ikach mikola bahema, and he took from all of the animals. Okay, v'yal olot b'mizbeach. And he brought sacrifices on the altar. The Yarach Hashem et Rach Nichoach, and Hashem smelt the pleasing aroma, okay, which is a metaphor for saying that this was a very pleasing act to Hashem. The Yom Hashem Alibon, Hashem says in his heart, Lo Asif Lakalel Od et Adama Bavur Hadam. I will no longer curse the ground because of man. 
this offering is so amazing. Noah's offering, this thing is so special that we see Hashem accepted Abel's offering, but Noah's offering he finds pleasant. And after Noah's offering, he makes a promise to save humankind. What was so special about Noah's offering? So this is what Rabbi Moshe Feinstein says. He says, even Abel, who did something very good and he brought the best of his things, even Abel was laboring under a misapprehension. Abel believed that he was giving a gift to Hashem. It was his and he was giving it to Hashem. That was his mistake. Noah realized that whatever he had really belonged to Hashem. It was taught, this message was taught to him very clearly with his experience of the flood, where Hashem very clearly showed that whatever exists in the world, whatever lives in the world, is, is really doing so as a gift from Hashem. No one knew, having first hand, having had his life spared by Hashem. But everything that we have is really from Hashem. And every moment we have it is a new gift from Hashem. And when we give to Hashem, we are not giving Him a gift of our own. We are simply returning to Him what is already His. A wonderful story of the Maggot of Dubna illustrates this. He says, you have three guys starting off a business and they go to the bank to take out loans for, uh, for their new businesses. So the first guy asks for a loan of 10,000 Rand, gets it. Second guy asks for a loan of 20,000 Rand, he gets it. Third guy asks for a loan of 500,000 Rand, he also gets it. And these guys are walking out, planning their business, and this third man with a 500,000 Rand loan turns around and says to the others, Ha ha! I'm much better off than you guys. I've got a lot more money. I'm, uh, I'm ahead. Turn around and say to him, you're ahead? You're doing better than us. Whatever you have and whatever we have, we owe to the bank. The fact that you've got more just means that you owe more. And that's the idea here as well. This is not a bad thing. This is a wonderful thing. Everything we have in our life belongs to Hashem. Every moment that we enjoy the blessings that we have, our family, our friends, our nice houses and clothes, whatever it is, we should realize that every moment that's a gift from Hashem. And all of the abilities that we're given, we should not think are ours. They are entrusted to us. We are trustees over them. But as trustees, we have a responsibility to use them appropriately, to use them for goodness and holiness. Have a wonderful service.